So I'll introduce our guest this morning, Minister Casey Rowley King, who's the um, Executive Director of Labor Relations, and Mr. Ford Rice, who's the Superintendent of the Strait Regional School Board. Minister Casey will start now. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us this morning. Our government is taking action to respond to the safety risks posed by the NSTU strike actions directives to its union members. Sent to teachers and principals earlier this week, the directives ask all union members to dramatically limit their supervision of students. We reviewed the NSTU directives carefully, consulted with staff from all school boards, and can only conclude that the safety risks for our students posed by the NSTU's recommended course of action must be mitigated. We also believe the actions would be in violation of the Education Act. We only arrived at these conclusions after consulting all school boards, seeking advice from internal and external legal counsel, and carefully reviewing the obligations of teachers, principals, and other union members under the Education Act. It is important to understand that the provisions of the Education Act take precedence over collective bargaining and contractual rights. This is very clear in the Act. The Act states that schools should be a safe and productive learning environment for students. It is also clear that principals and teachers have a legal obligation to make it so. The legal duty to help keep students safe is unconditional. It does not start 20 minutes before school starts or take a break for lunch or elapse 20 minutes after classes at the end of the day. This obligation to look after children and try to keep them safe is also at the very core of the NSTU's Code of Ethics. Under the teacher's own ethical guidelines, members should, and I would quote, assume responsibility for the safety and welfare of pupils, especially under conditions of emergency, end of quote. We believe that most teachers under normal conditions do adhere to those guidelines. It is clear, however, after communicating with school board officials across the province, that the job actions proposed by the NSTU could indeed put our students in an unsafe environment. More than 43,000 students are supervised at lunch and at other times during the school day by teachers. These students could be left unsupervised in classrooms or on playgrounds, and that is unacceptable. We were also advised that educational assistance may not be there to meet students with special needs as they arrive by bus or other means. If only one student is stranded, the NSTU's withdrawal of service, that would be one too many. Without teachers in place, who, know, who would know which students have food allergies, which students have health issues, and which students need special help? This is an acknowledgement and a profound one of the important and critical role that our teachers play in keeping our children safe, in educating our young people, and in preparing them for careers and for citizenship. Teachers play such an important role that we cannot safely keep the schools open without teachers keeping that commitment to their students. Teachers are faced with a conflicting decision between the directives from their union and their responsibilities under the Education Act. For that reason, we are taking two important steps. Our goal is to take these steps in order to keep students safe. First, we will close the schools to students starting on Monday morning. Teachers and other staff will be expected to show up for work. And we must be very clear, we are not locking the union out. Secondly, we will introduce legislation that will get students back into school as quickly as possible. The Teachers Professional Agreement Act will adopt the tentative agreement reached by the union and the government 
on September 2, 2016, as an NSTU contract extending until the end of July 2019. The safety of our students is paramount in all of this. We are confident that we are taking the right steps to ensure our schools continue to operate as safe and productive places for learning. Thank you. That concludes the formal portion um, of, the, uh, of, of this morning's availability. We'll now take questions from members of the media here in the room first, and then we'll go to the phone lines. Marika, go ahead. I'm wondering if you can explain how this contract stops work to rule. Teachers can still work to a contract. So if the contract doesn't obligate them to work more than 20 minutes before or after school, how does that change anything? Uh, worked rule activities are considered strike activities, so if the teachers union is in a legal strike position, they're entitled to work to rule activities. If they are not in a legal strike position, work to rule activities would be considered illegal strike activity. And uh, with the passing of the bill, they will not be in a legal strike position. Sorry. After the passage of the bill, will they will they be able to withdraw some of their services? For instance, how can you legislate that they volunteer to coach a sports team? Voluntary activities are up to individual teachers, and they are not covered by the collective agreement. Right. Work to rule will uh, your legislation will will outlaw some of the work to rule the withdrawal of services, but not all. They wouldn't impose a requirement for teachers to carry out voluntary duties. They do that on their own. Isn't arriving 20 minutes before school a voluntary duty? And isn't lunch supervision a voluntary duty? If the contract does not stipulate that they need to be there prior to 20 minutes before, isn't that them volunteering their time? Um, I, I would point you to the duties of teachers under the Education Act and the requirements that uh, student safety is paramount at all times that they're there, including when they arrive, when they leave, and while they're at school, including lunchtime. And Minister, what's your message to parents who now have to find childcare as of Monday and have no clue how long that will last? Thank you. We certainly have been hearing from parents who are concerned and asking the question, is it safe for my child to go to school? Not knowing for sure what uh, supervision will be provided at the school. So what we're saying to parents is we recognize that this uh, will be an inconvenience uh, in the short term, but we believe that the uh, responsibility to ensure that their students are safe uh, is a priority, and we will err on the side of that. Minister Casey, as you know, students have uh, walked out of school yesterday, about a thousand in support of their teachers. Now, what I'd like to ask you is um, what measures will the government be taking to minimize disruption to um, graduation exams and end of year exams for final year students because they are quite worried that um, this will impact their education and chances of applying to university? Uh, when, uh, with the passage of the legislation and with the new contract for teachers, there will be no interruption in uh, the examination periods or, or any of the normal uh, expected uh, programs that, stu that teachers deliver. Have you been advised how long it should take the government to pass the legislation? That will be a, a decision to be made in the legislature, but we will be introducing it on Monday. So in fact, you'll, you'll be sitting around the clock once you get past first reading? We have made a commitment that we want students back in classes and we want teachers there with them and we know teachers want to be there with them, so we will do whatever we can to move that through the legislature. Minister, what's your message to teachers about this decision? Uh, I think that teachers will recognize and some have uh, suggested that they are in a difficult position because they are conflicted between their commitment to the act and their commitment to the uh, contract. Uh, I think it's clear and we've made it clear that the Education Act does take precedence. I think what it says to teachers is that their role in supervising students in our schools is absolutely critical and with the uncertainty about what that level will be and how that will be administered that school boards felt it was unsafe for schools to be open. Minister, this sorts out the contract issue but a lot of the issues raised by teachers covered working conditions and classroom conditions. 
parents have talked about that, students have talked about it, and teachers have talked about it. So what happens next in dealing with that side? I've, I've answered that question all along in that we recognize, have listened to teachers, recognize that they have some very real concerns and we want to continue to address those which we have since we formed government and we will continue. And uh, working with the teachers union, the partnership that was set up was designed exactly to do that. Uh, that work has started and that work will continue. Madam Minister, the uh, NSTU and uh and the government may not necessarily agree on what is work to rule and what isn't work to rule. Uh, how are you going to deal with that? I think it's become obvious that uh, the work to rule has gone beyond the definition of a work to rule and has infringed on what uh, teachers are expected to do under the Act. And so that clarity uh, has, to, has been provided, we hope. How, how um that's your interpretation though, right? The teachers union has very clearly said they do not believe that they are either in um, in conflict with the Education Act or with the rules governing them. So what tools do you have to make sure that they arrived more than 20 minutes before school starts? I again would refer to the obligations and the responsibilities that teachers have under the Act, which is for supervision of students. And this is clearly about the supervision of students and ensuring the safety of students while they are on, on the school grounds. It seems um, very heavy-handed. Why, why is this what is needed? It's unfortunate that this is what is needed, but it is fortunate that we are able to do it uh, at this point in time to protect students and to keep them safe. And, and that is exactly what is driving the decisions that we're making. The Halifax School Board, for example, said that they had already figured out bus arrival times and they had figured out lunch supervision. So what, um, how many students, how many schools did you determine would not have had proper safety coverage? We have been in uh, communication with school boards, uh, all school boards ac across the uh, uh, province uh, on a regular basis, asking them how, how they can mitigate, how they can ensure safety. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, our superintendent here, who was one of eight superintendents, who indicated to us very clearly that they were not able to uh, guarantee that students in their schools would be safe. Do you want to just speak to that, please? Thank you, Minister. In the Strait Regional School Board in particular, all student supervision is done by uh, teachers and administrators who are members of the NSTU. And if these teachers and administrators chose to adhere to the uh, direction of the NSTU, uh, we would be not be able to provide for the safe and security of the uh, students while in our care during the day. So we're going to go to the phone lines now. Um, do any of you on the phone lines who are members of the media have any questions for the minister, Roly, or um, the superintendent from the straight board? It's Jean Laroche from CBC. Hello? Go ahead, Jean. All right. I have a number of questions. But first, can I ask the people who are on the uh, uh, conference call to mute your phones, please? Thank you. Um, Minister, how is this not a lockout? Uh, I will ask uh, Roly to speak to the specifics of that, but teachers are expected to be at work. Uh, they will be at work on Monday, and uh, as soon as the uh, legislation is passed and students are back, it will be back to school, back to work as usual. So we are not locking teachers out. Do you want to clarify that? I think uh, you, you uh, actually answered the question, but Jean, just to be clear, uh, Staff will be required to report to work on Monday, and that includes teachers. Uh, the schools are only closed to students. Uh, if it was a lockout, teachers would be prohibited from coming to work. Go and ahead, Jean, you with your other questions. And what would you expect teachers to do since they won't have students to teach? Uh, I would expect, uh, as the superintendent, I would expect that uh, teachers during this point in time uh, would be engaged in uh, marking and preparation uh, uh, which teachers do uh, all the time, but uh, during this time, uh, when there are no students present, we'll probably be involved in marketing and prep. Go ahead, John. Did you all have right, another then. question? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Minister, you mentioned a number of times safety concerns. These are children that are on school property, either in the, as you said, uh, during the lunchtime and uh, uh, after school. 
What specifically are you worried it will happen to these children without uh, adult supervision? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I really don't want us to speculate because when you speculate, it's not a nice picture. But let's say there was a uh, five-year-old student. Parents were to come and pick them up. Parents weren't there within the 20 minute. The student is left alone on the playground. That's unacceptable and we're not prepared for, to have students put at risk in that way. And finally, in terms of your bill that you plan to bring in on Monday, what specifically will you be outlawing in that bill? Ms. Rowley, I'll answer that uh, question. Uh, the legislation will essentially take the expired collective agreement that expired uh, July 31st, 2015, apply the terms of the tentative agreement reached uh, September 2nd of this year, and uh, with the passage, there will be a new collective agreement in place uh, when the bill is uh, in effect. So when is the legislative action over? Like, is, is the legal job action ending when the legislation is proclaimed? When the legislation is proclaimed, a new teacher's professional agreement will be in effect, and under the provisions of the Teacher's Collective Bargaining Act, uh, strike activity is not permitted when there is a collective agreement in place. So we'll so, go back to the phone lines and take two more questions from the phone lines. Do any of you on the phone have any questions for either uh, Minister Casey, Rowley, or the superintendent? Uh, yeah. Frank Campbell here. Um, does not a collective agreement uh, require agreement from both sides? There are two ways a collective agreement can be put in place. One is if it's negotiated between the two parties and, ex and executed by signature, or if it's imposed, and it could be imposed by legislation or by arbitration. And arbitration awards would automatically impose an agreement that hasn't necessarily been agreed to by the parties. Do we have any other questions from the phone lines? Yes. Go and ahead. Yes, um, if you're saying that teachers are required to outside their mandated time, do you not admit teachers, Minister, that, that they're concerned that they are required to perform action beyond which they are being compensated? Can you identify yourself? It's very hard to hear your question. Yes, it's Andrew Brooks with the Victoria Standard in Cape Breton. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, uh, my question was, if Minister, if you're stating that teachers are required to be present outside their current mandated uh, reporting time, are you not admitting to the teacher's concerns that they are being required to perform actions beyond which they are being currently compensated? I, I, I'm wondering if you're referring to the uh, Education Act taking precedent over the contract. Is that the basis of your question? Well, it, 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 the precedent was set earlier in, in question saying that, you know, there's no suggestion that they need to be there beyond 20 minutes, but you're saying their presence beyond that is, is crucial to uh, student safety. So uh, I'm wondering if that doesn't suggest that they're, they're concerns that they're being undercompensated for time beyond that mandated 20 minutes. I, I would say that the the two different the two discrepancies are what is expected of a teacher during, under the Education Act, and what is um, a part of their uh, commitment through the through the contract, and, and that's where the discrepancy is. Uh, but I go back to say that the teachers uh, the Ele uh, Education Act does take precedent over that. So can I ask how? Can I ask how the, that, that particular contract would have ever been passed if you're saying it's in contradiction to the Education Act? I'm not saying it's in contradiction. I'm saying it, it take, that the Education Act takes precedent over that and are, there are uh, clearly defined roles and responsibilities of teachers and principals in the Education Act. And that is what takes precedent. When do you expect this uh, legislation will be proclaimed? 
Uh, we are we are calling the House back on Monday, and we will go through the normal process for for legislation. Uh, as I've said earlier, we're prepared to stay there as long as we need to stay there in order to make sure that we get our students back in our classrooms as quickly as possible and the teachers in front of uh, students where they want to be. What, what, happen, what happens to the Long Service Award now? Is the Long Service Award, how it's being ended, going to be part of this contract? The terms of the tentative agreement, September 2nd, uh, frees the service of the Long Service Award. So doesn't that open you up to a court challenge given the Supreme Court's ruling a few weeks ago? Uh, certainly we've done our diligence in um, assuring ourselves that this legislation will withstand a challenge. We'll take one last question and that's it. And what is the explanation for how this legislation will withstand a challenge if you're removing a contract clause? It's not removing a contract clause, it's modifying the existing based on the agreement that was reached between the parties September 2nd, 2016. And that concludes today's availability. Thank you for coming. Thank you.